Hi everyone. So first of all, I, I hope that everybody's you know doing well uh, during these difficult times, um, staying at home. And um, well, I'm recording this lecture uh, for um, on the one side uh, uh, students at uh, Amsterdam University College. Uh, hi everyone. And I'm also putting it on the YouTube channel. Uh, maybe somebody else you know finds some some value or or entertainment in uh, in uh, what's uh, what's coming next. So um, uh, my presentation is entitled From Algorithms to Diagrams, How to Study Platforms. And it's a bit of a work in progress. So uh, I'm kind of like working towards a, 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 a book project here. And um, it's a project that draws on you know, a couple of years of work in different areas. And um, it's, all about, uh, it's all about connection. Um, and um, hopefully um, it's not uh, too uh, all over the place. Uh, so just to, to jump right into this, um, the, um, the, the, the starting point for me uh, with this is, is, is the question of, of platforms, right? I mean, it's, it's not a new term. Um, platforms, online platforms have been discussed quite intensely and, and using different names uh, for yeah, at least 20 years now. Um, and uh, well, we're all aware of, uh, you know, the like the very big companies uh, that, uh, you know, inform well, platforms like uh, like the one you're currently on uh, YouTube or, you know, other social media uh, uh, platforms. But of course, also um, uh, things that, uh, you know, connect to selling, to meeting, to business activity and so forth. So there's actually been a, you know, a, tradi a tradition within like media studies and other disciplines to, um, you know, approach these like complex, um, like techno institutional forms. Um, you know, Hartmut Winkler has uh, uh, talked about search engines as, uh, as meta media. And then uh, later on in, um, in the mid 2000s, uh, Tim O'Reilly coined the term Web 2.0. And uh, uh, one of the descriptions of, of Web 2.0 was indeed web, web, the web as platform that you can build on, uh, create your business. Jonathan Thitrain has uh, uh, talked about walled gardens. And in economics literature, there have been terms like uh, two-sided markets, right? That I will be drawing on a little bit uh, uh, today that uh, indeed um, uh, are at the beginning of um, uh, what's now no known as uh, platform economics. Um, more recently, uh, Talton Gillespie has uh, called uh, the big uh, social media platforms custodians of the internet. And it's an interesting shift because he thematizes this, um, this uh, uh, slow, uh, I wouldn't say transformation, but um, um, you know, demand put forward to uh, large online platforms to not just host and, uh, um, uh, you know, facilitate exchange and communication, but also, you know, introduce things like online moderation, content moderation, like protection and so forth, you know, becoming custodians. So, so we're seeing that while this term platform has been around for a while, there are indeed a number of, um, of uh, uh, shifts that have, been, uh, that have been happening. Yeah, indeed. I mean, the companies are very, very big. There is the question of monopoly. Um, uh, Anne Helmond has coined the term a platformization, which right, really uh, this kind of larger move of different functions towards platforms. Uh, um, she, she talks about the emergence of a dominant economic and infrastructural model. And, and that is a little bit the starting point uh, for, uh, for this, um, this presentation. Um, a second starting point is that within these uh, systems, um, algorithms algorithms are uh, increasingly implicated in, in in making connections, right, uh, between you know people and information, products, people and uh, other people, um, and and this algorithmic function has really become increasingly um, suspect, or at least uh, people are, um, are scrutinizing it more uh, more intensely. Um, particularly in the context of, you know, inf info medi uh, medi mediation. It's a term by uh, Rebilla and Smenaios, uh, um, who really talk about the mediation of particularly information tasks. So if you look at the right here, you know, Angela Merkel talking about uh, search engines as, uh, um, as distorting perception, right? Uh, terms like misinformation are, of course, uh, very important here. And I would say, at least since the U.S. elections of uh, 2016, uh, these um, these questions have really been uh, much more prominent, and uh, again, I mean terms like distortion, opacity, but also like fragmentation and 
polarization, polit political polarization. Uh, they, um, they, they, they appear in, the, in, the, in those critiques that we see uh, now more and more often. Um, and then terms like uh, yeah, plurality, transpar transparency or accountability are really proposed as you know, solutions. Um, in some cases, uh, people go further, right? Um, this is a book by, uh, by Tim Wu, um, uh, who talks about uh, uh, new forms of antitrust, right? So, so in a more, let's say, more, I wouldn't call them more robust, but maybe um, like stronger critiques, uh, um, uh, people talk about platform domination and as a remedy, um, things like, uh, like antitrust. Um, so those are quite... Um, uh, quite uh, far-reaching uh, uh, things, but I mean, more practically, there have been, uh, um, you know, accusations uh, about, well, I mean, you can see the headline here, how YouTube drives people to the internet's darkest corners, right? And and these kind of problems that appear with um, platforms are often um, put uh, uh, on the on the shoulders of, um, of uh, algorithms that are being accused of, you know, kind of performing these, these dire, dire functions. I mean, much more broadly, we have seen um, in this kind of like space of um, uh, media information on the one side and platforms on the other, um, the emergence of all kinds of dependencies, right? Journalists are increasingly um, dependent and, you know, journalistic institutions on, uh, on these platforms for, uh, for uh, uh, receiving traffic. And, and here this New York Times article uh, uh, shows, you know, journalists brace for the next big uh, uh, algorithm change. And, and this, of course, begs the question whether these platforms are not already um, uh, media organizations themselves. So the quote here from the Center for Media Pluralism and Media Freedom already in 2013 really makes that argument that platforms are not just like neutral uh, intermediaries, but indeed themselves media organizations. So, so you know, from these two examples, you can already see that there is like some, some form of like comp complexification, right? There's the new things are happening that are really uh, not, so, not so clear. Um, and on the other side, uh, there's really this, I wouldn't necessarily call it an, an accusation, but this analysis that, that platforms have a lot of power, right? Um, and uh, a lot of different disciplines in academia have uh, tried to uh, thematize this power, to understand it, to analyze it. And, and there have been a lot of different methodologies um, but also like normative disagreements. By that, I mean that, that people don't necessarily share the same um, like, uh, uh, you know, ethical or political convictions, which means that the critiques also, you know, focus on different kinds of elements and what is being identified as a problem isn't necessarily the same between different researchers. Um, so in, in my own work, uh, which, um, um, you know, comes a little bit out of... Um, it's kind of like cross uh, a cross section between like more technological fo focused work and um, and uh, humanities work. I've I've been very interested in general in thinking technical objects, right? And platforms in many ways are technical objects as um, technologies of power, right? Um, and in, in well, in the context of my work, this has you know included historical and conceptual investigations into what I've yeah I like to call uh, algorithmic techniques. Um, I've myself been uh, quite active in creating digital tools for researchers that aim at platform analysis, data extraction, and so forth. I've done a little bit of uh, empirical research, um, uh, again, doing a bit more now again. Um, I've been quite interested in questions concerning software design, right? How are those objects made? Um, and in general, right, I'm interested in this kind of connection between technology, politics, and economics uh, increasingly. So, so this presentation draws on those different uh, different lines of uh, investigation, and I'm I'm going to focus. I mean, since we're here uh, 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 on YouTube, uh, I'm going I'm going to focus on this platform. I've been um, uh, doing a couple of research projects, and now a pretty big one uh, that focuses on uh, on YouTube. Um, but uh, I hope uh, um, uh, you will see that uh, this you know just goes beyond also this uh, uh, singular singular platform here. Um, I mean, YouTube, I think, is, is, is interesting in, 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 in many ways. I think it hasn't been studied as um, widely uh, as uh, other platforms, for example, Facebook and, uh, and Twitter in particular, um, but is the second most uh, visited web page on the, on the Internet. 
and um, it has particularly in this uh, uh, polarization of misinformation critique been kind of like singled out as um, playing um, a, a particular role in um, you know making uh, uh, well particularly far right content uh, uh, more easily available. Um, I've also just put here a, a PewDiePie screenshot from a PewDiePie's YouTube. Um, YouTube uh, um, uh, channel, which now has 1.4, uh, sorry, not 1.4, 104 million subscribers, which, which as such, I find just really interesting, right? Because these kind of numbers, they really blur uh, um, this relationship between, uh, you know, what's a social medium, what is, um, what is um, uh, like a mass medium, right? So I think that's also interesting uh, that, that uh, YouTube has this particular vector of professionalization and like emerging uh, businesses um, being created on top of that platform. Um, so, so I mean, from a more theoretical perspective, I think what what one can uh, um, uh, you know call all of these all of these changes um, that you know YouTube is an important part of uh, is the emergence of what yeah Chadwick calls a, a hybrid media system, right? So it's not that that you know these new platforms re replace everything else but rather that they're you know like complex and 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 you know pretty hard to understand um relationships that that emerge um one could also talk about like a new screen ecology uh with uh, uh, cunningham and uh, and colleagues um i mean one one of the things of course that that i think is interesting and, and that we shouldn't forget right is since these platforms are so large and, and globe spanning we we must be a little bit careful that even if we maybe, you know, we're ourselves YouTube users and, you know, we think we know what's on there and, and we think we know what the use patterns are, that, that there are quite some, you know, cultural differences between countries, but also, you know, within um, uh, different, uh, um, different uh, places in, uh, in our own cultures, right? Um, and, and, and that I think um, uh, um, we have to keep in mind, right, to, to not uh, uh, jump to uh, maybe conclusions uh, too, too quickly. So, I mean, I've, I've called this uh, uh, presentation from algorithms to, uh, to diagrams because it's a little bit also of a, of a, of a process in my, in, in my own uh, uh, thinking. And um, my goal in the end, and I, I hope to be really able to formulate this more, more um, coherently in the, in, in the future, is, is not to create a, what you know, Burgess has called um, a platform biography um, of, of YouTube, but to, to retrace what you could call a, a platform diagram, right? And, and that term diagram has, of course, like different meanings. I think on the one side, you can think about it more in a more schematic or even technical sense. And here, uh, um, I really like this uh, quote by Bratton, who says that on a more mechanical level, a platform is also a standardized diagram or technology, right? Thinking about those like data flows, maybe, you know, the way like functions connect different constituencies. But um, I'm also a bit inspired by, um, by the work of uh, Michel Foucault here and particularly the reading that, uh, that Gilles Deleuze makes of it, the, the, the diagram um, as a tool to think, you know, connections between um, heterogeneous elements. Uh, and, and you'll see that in this presentation, I'm going to talk about a lot of different things uh, that, that then kind of come together uh, uh, forming, you know, what what YouTube is and what happens on it. Um, so for Foucault, there's, uh, you know, this connection between discourses, you know, something that has more to do with like meaning and ideas and architecture, you know, the, the more the physical stuff, the material world. Um, it, it, Deleuze formula formulates this as a connection between like programs and mechanisms, right? Something a bit softer and something a bit harder coming together, right? Um, but But the interesting thing is that then uh, even if we have, you know, social practices on the one side, uh, technical elements on the others, um, uh, on the other side, uh, uh, still, right? It it um, it it's it's an arrangement of, of parts that 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 you know uh, function uh, as a as a whole. Um, I mean, this is also like a diagram. This is not necessarily what I mean by diagram, but it's maybe just another way of thinking about it, and it's something that's gonna play a little bit uh, of a role throughout the presentation. Um, so this is, uh, if you will, like the, the like the standard scheme of what economists call a, a, a multi-sided market. And um, uh, while this is not an economics presentation, I um, I think it's quite quite interesting to think about something like a platform in in this way, right? So so here you have this idea that on the one side you have one group, right, one side of a market, 
you know you could think about it uh, as um, as uh, uh, you know users on the other side you have like advertisers or, or you know sellers and, the, and the, the platform brings the two together right um, and it facilitates a transaction by you know supporting functions like offer searching but you know also security for example if there's like a um, uh, uh, you know think about Airbnb or something like this contracting payment and so forth um, so so one could look at YouTube um, through, through this kind of very schematic uh, diagram as maybe like a three-sided market where we have like end users on the one side we've got content creators on the other and advertisement uh, advertisers on the on the third side and and advertisers place ads on you know contents in order to reach uh, end users so so you know this is maybe something to keep in mind this kind of like very schematic overview and i'll be coming back to that um again M maybe just uh, you know as, as 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 another element of context be before jumping uh, more deeply into the presentation um I, I really like to think about platforms also as being part of you know there's an old term that I really like because it's 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 very you know it's very descriptive it's computerization right the, 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 in the end all of this wouldn't be possible uh, without um, computers and it's not just about you know like 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 digital data but it's about those full functions of the computer to do all kinds of uh, uh, things um, so Philip Agre he says that you know computerization has led to like infrastructures that capture not not data that's not the first element but but capture practices themselves so think about um, uh, you know uh, uh, how well we're in the quarantine now right uh, how uh, what we're doing here now for example structures the way uh, uh, we we relate think about um, something like an like a um, you know canvas or, or blackboard is kind of e-learning uh, systems how they structure interaction um, this is what the agri means with capture and and Bar Boros says that this is not just the capture of like existing practices but it there are new you know, new practices that are being constituted and existing ones are being um, uh, are reconfigured uh, Coldway and Hap call this deep mediatization right so um, uh, are really kind of this idea that like more and more things uh, are are being like mediated through interfaces databases and so forth um, and, and the interesting thing is that if you look at something like uh, yeah platforms uh, YouTube is you can see that of course the the there's a certain like 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 flattening in the sense that um, uh, you know I have a YouTube channel which is very very small but from a from a technical perspective uh, or, or from a you know if you like a functional perspective it's the same as as PewDiePie's channel there's the same interfaces uh, uh, there's the same units it's uh, videos that circulate you can comment here you can comment there and so forth right um, so there's a certain flattening in that in that sense a certain standardization um, and we can see that in all kinds of uh, uh, platforms um, and, and this is this makes it possible to do all of this through interfaces right through um, we don't need like uh, I don't have to talk to anyone to upload a video right it goes directly through the the, the interface and this makes it very easy to um, to, to do this uh, uh, and 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 you know YouTube is huge right so it's a very large market if you will where you know offer and demand uh, uh, comes uh, comes together and Agra indeed says he says you know through this uh, standardization that capture involves uh, we can move like more things to like market-based relationships right that are really being coordinated through uh, you know like complex forms of um, encounter between offer and demand algorithms play an important role in there right um, so he says, and I'm not going to go into this into detail, right? Like how this works, right? So the different the different elements of um, of, um, of of the um, uh, coordination process or of, of, of transactions are being facilitated, um, and um, uh, yeah. So um, uh, you know, if you want to look uh, look do deeper into this, you have um, you have the references here. But what I think is interesting is that the the way kind of this market, like in, in case of YouTube, right, of this video market is being organized. Is, is through you know kind of like many instances of decision making right the YouTube the, the platform they have like decided on on the design they have they're looking into the business models and so forth so it's not just you know something that just exists but it's something that's very much made and and since these mar markets are so large right uh, there's so much video out there 
uh, the question is really like how are how do people get to videos um, and and in this situation um, there has been both a, a, I would say like a demand for algorithmic like techniques that facilitate this kind of search process or, or like connection process and also um, a, a, a situation that like valorizes uh, this movement to algorithms so a platform that has a good recommender system right uh, really has a competitive uh, uh, advantage and that means that these algorithms that perform these connection functions in these very large markets uh, have yeah uh, received also a lot of attentions uh, attention from the companies themselves and now from people who analyze uh, all of that so so we can think about you know platforms as like techno institutional forms and i really like this this idea of uh, of, of benjamin bratton that they sit somewhere between markets so they kind of decentralize so you know almost everybody can upload a video to youtube but they also work a bit like stay states in the sense that they centralize right they uh, everything then goes through the platforms and and you know in terms of the platforms uh, um, and so forth right then he talks about um, the programmed coordination or the governance of interactions right um, so that's that's very very interesting um, but but at the same time there there are people on these platforms right and they do things and and so one of the the, the difficult questions is really like like what is going on on platforms it's really hard to know right traditional mass media were also not like easy to study but something like YouTube like how many channels are there what kind of Contact, content is there what is the role of the platform what is the role of of users right what are the like the factors or the causes behind you know what we actually see on youtube what you could call you know the outcomes so so what i want to do uh, uh, over you know kind of the next um i don't know i tend to do things a bit too long i'm sorry for that uh, maybe half an hour 45 minutes um is to to draw a bit of a a YouTube diagram that looks at that looks at it from different different uh, uh, directions. Um, uh, so I'm gonna try to kind of like juxtaposition or at least maybe name point towards things that are very often um, treated separately by different uh, different um, uh, uh, disciplines. And there are six uh, levels, uh, six things that I want to talk about: algorithms, constructing infrastructures, participants, um, contents. Um, then also industrial practices, business models, policies and values, and at the end uh, um, a little bit of like um, a company and it's more like um, um, you know kind of competition uh, uh, like market things. But um, I, I'm gonna not uh, spend a lot of time uh, on on that. Um, so so e each one of those six elements, there are many possibilities for you know concrete uh, concrete research. Um, and uh, you know each one of them has like highlights particular questions approaches um but but you know there's also like each, each one of those approaches has itself like a historical uh, backdrop and I'll, I'll not be able to you know reconstruct uh, uh, all of that so it's it's gonna maybe be more like example focused um and well you, you'll you'll see um so so starting with um um well algorithms and i, I put that a little bit under quotes because it's it's becoming it has really become I think a bit of a sloppy term right um, like ah oh, the algorithm and YouTube's algorithm I mean within YouTube there's a lot of different kinds of you know technologies and you know uh, um, even like very specific uh, uh, um, you know if you think about like search and recommendation there's all kinds of stuff going on right but but if we come back to this scheme right we we, you know, we, we can think about like one important algorithmic function within this like large video market is is something like searching, recommending between, you know, end users on the one side who want to watch something and content creators who want to, you know, who, who want to be seen. Um, and, and, and within this, of course, you know, the, the question is then, ah, so, so what's the power of algorithms, right? Um, um, and, and this is not uh, like a new question, but particularly now in the context of machine learning, all of this has, has really been, uh, been made a little bit, uh, a little bit more um, uh, complicated. Um, and because it's complicated and it, it seems to be quite important, right? Uh, so Angela Merkel is talking about, uh, about those things now. There have been indeed like demands for like transparency and accountability. So, so how can we understand you know, how those algorithms work? Uh, maybe what kind of effects they have and so forth and they have been i would say uh, like like very broadly like two two directions 
uh, one of them being um, the empirical study of algorithmic systems, uh, right? For example, trying to, you know, uh, uh, like uh, 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 capture or collect data and, uh, and then kind of try to reverse engineer or to, to get some kind of, you know, insight into the workings of, of the system. Um, or maybe, you know, even doing something like as a code audit, uh, you know, looking at the, the source code, these kind of approaches, or, or something that's, that's maybe more conceptual, right, where, where we, where, you know, scholars try to think um, about, you know, what kind of, what kind of, you know, epistemological, like, agent is an algorithm, right? How, how, do, how do machine learning algorithms operate or even, even think? Um, uh, in, in these kind of two directions, right? I think they're 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 both um, very very interesting. And um, I mean, just to give you like a, a a very general idea how maybe this kind of like more conceptual approach could work. I mean, one can look at concrete examples of you know machine learning or <clears throat> a similar similar techniques. And and here on the right, you see um you see um this bar chart uh, from um from a quite interesting study, I think it's a pretty good example for, for how, you know, the, the, this whole like machine learning setup works uh, by uh, Kosinski and colleagues who, who, um, who try to use uh, Facebook likes to predict uh, these kind of, you know, very intimate uh, or, or sensitive var variables, right? You have uh, drug use in there, you have, um, uh, uh, so it's a US context, you have, uh, you have uh, racial questions in there, you have uh, political affiliation, sexual preferences, uh, uh, and so forth, right? And, and the way this worked, um, this study worked, I think is a good example for how, how we can think about machine learning, right? How, in, how, how, how the kind of the setup works. So, so, so what they did was they basically had, had two groups of, well, students in this case, um, and uh, uh, starting with the first group, they asked uh, uh, them for access to their Facebook profiles, but not to the whole profile, just for the likes, right? Um, and then they, uh, um, you know, uh, 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 distributed a questionnaire to this first group, asking the students to position themselves along these very variables, right? Along these variables that you see on the on the right, and you know, the the, the learning part is then basically just a mathematical operation that tries to connect these kind of target. It's called target variables to the signals, right? The signals are the likes, right? Um, and since uh, uh, we can, you know, kind of imagine that there's some connection between what people like and, you know, like part of their identity, their personality, their preferences, um, you know, there are probabil probability relationships uh, created between those specific signals, likes in this case, and those outcome variables, right? And machine learning is simply um, a way to actually, you know, make these connections in increasingly complex ways uh, uh, mathematically. What they then did is that they tested, you know, how well does our system perform? And this is where the second group of people comes in. So they also asked the second group of people for um, their likes. And then based on their likes, they tried to guess the, the variables on the right. And after that, they again distributed a questionnaire asking, you know, people to tell them, ah, you know, what's right. And those are the, the success numbers, right? So, for example, the, the two highest one here are, are, are race and, uh, and uh, uh, gender. And um, in the case of race, uh, they were able to, to guess uh, uh, um, uh, correctly uh, um, 19 out of, out of 20 times, right? And, and this kind of like training process is quite interesting because in the end, it's the, 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 um, the like the feedback and this, this this process of um, of um, uh, uh, you know uh, making a making a, a, a prediction, then then getting some kind of um, feedback signal that allows to kind of uh, transfer significance and meaning to those signals, right? And in the context of, um, of of platforms, this is maybe used differently, right? Maybe the the output variable is uh, time on site, and uh, the machine learning system or click probability for ads, and the machine learning system will then use this as, you know, kind of the desired outcome and learn, you know, the signals, for example, you know, how a certain ad should look like, what kind of content, uh, content is interesting to a person. Um, so so what, how the signal uh, should be uh, constructed. 
and, and it is quite interesting, and I've tried to um, understand this as um, or describe this as a, like an interested reading of reality, right? It's not just a, a, you know descriptive, particularly in the context of platforms, um, but it's really a system that allows to um, to um, uh, uh, you know say, okay, this is my goal, right? This is my this is what I want to um, where I want to get to in the context of platform. Very often connected to you know engagement or well some kind of economic function um uh, and, and then basically the machine uh, uh, the machine learning system will will will, will you know kind of uh, uh, learn the ingredients for that and be able to kind of optimize these kind of processes so as leo da says the goal is not truth but performativity the best input output uh, relation um so this is this is one way to think maybe more conceptually about um about uh, machine learning systems and i'm gonna shamelessly plug uh, my uh, upcoming book uh, engines of order where i look into these um, principles in, in in quite some de depth i think it's gonna come out uh, next month and you can download it for free but uh, you know uh, also more generally we can look at more concrete research that is being done even currently so on the right here you have a publication from people at at youtube that talk about the machine learning system using uh, uh, you know deep learning uh, that they were building right so so there are kind of different um, ways of approaching like the, the way algorithms work um, uh, uh, you know like from the outside or um, you know kind of like based on these more like general uh, things but in the case of, of, of YouTube for example for some time we actually had we actually had some information so so this is a screenshot um, that um, uh, from um, uh, YouTube's uh, creator handbook uh, where they you know gave some indication of uh, how search ranking works watch time recency uh, uh, you know exclusion of, of duplicates and then you know query relevance are some of the factors they've now removed that uh, um, so that's kind of interesting um, but but you know it's not uh, uh, that you know kind of everything is either you know completely a black box or you know completely transparent but we can say some things um, about these kind of systems and, and maybe not others but now if we look at this uh, um, uh, this kind of like second strand that i mentioned before um, looking at algorithms empirically i mean here are a couple of examples uh, this is the project algo transparency by uh, somebody who used to uh, work uh, for uh, youtube uh, guillaume chasselot and, and he's like every day he crawls basically a number of channels and then looks what is being recommended and, and on, on his uh, website you can you can look at that right this is not gonna like reverse engineer the, the 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 algorithm in the sense that you'll be you know able to derive the exact mathematical um, specifications but at least you'll be able to say ah you know like this is the kind of content that gets you know uh, recommended regularly and uh, uh, we can look at it from the outside a bit like this um, I, I also did a, a project going a bit into that direction with a bunch of colleagues where we looked particularly into search ranking so you know very schematically here you have a, a search page uh, for um, uh, uh, the query Syria and then well you have a ranked list of um, of videos right and this ranking process is of course you know kind of like important uh, especially if we if we think about um, uh, the fact that YouTube apparently is the second largest search engine on the web so it's really being used as this uh, uh, reference quality and and what we did is we tried to understand or we tried to look at these search results over over time so we used um, a tool set uh, um, that uh, I, I have been building for the last couple of uh, uh, well for the last five years already a YouTube data tool so you can try them out yourself um, and uh, we um, said okay let's um, let's uh, 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 select a number of queries um, that we're gonna use to um, basically as you know like entry points into the into the ranking system and um, um, let's do that over time you know let's let's do that every day for a while and then let's see how the rankings the rankings change and and we use like different ways of uh, analyzing this so this is a, a a rank flow a visualization system that you know if you follow uh, every every column here is like a day and and the top video is on the on the top and you can you can see here that there's some variation for example the 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 video that is on top um uh on the first two days is going to the second position on the third and then going back up again right 
Um, and if we do that for you know a number of uh, queries, we get actually quite different what we call like morphologies, right? So here you have three queries. One is uh, Gamergate, which was like a controversy around uh, gaming, journalism, and harassment. Uh, and uh, during the observation period, which was in summer 2016, um, that controversy was already quite stale, right? And so there wasn't all that much change here over the seven weeks that we looked at. Then for, for Syria, we found kind of like quite interesting patterns. You can see this here on the left, right? Um, uh, um, where uh, uh, it, it almost seems to flip between, you know, s a situation where we have videos higher up that have a lot of views uh, and then they disappear and then they come back again, right? Um, so this is a, a, um, an interesting, um, 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 yeah, uh, almost um, a, a flip between like two forms of, uh, of, of ranking. Um, and then the third one was the query Trump um, so just before the, U the U.S. elections, and here, like, change was constant, right? Uh, in, in, in here, over the seven weeks, we, we found no video that stayed into, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the top 20 uh, um, uh, longer than four days, right? So everything, like, stuff comes in very quickly, goes out again, right? Um, so, so uh, I mean, these are kind of, like, three examples for, like, three, yeah, what we call morphologies, either stable over longer periods of time, stable with like new C interruptions, and then fully new C queries that change like, constantly, right? So this is one way that we've tried to, um, to um, um, you know, talk about uh, YouTube ranking. And, and what was kind of interesting, and this is really where this um, journey from, well, journey, I don't know, but, you know, this uh, move from algorithms to, um, to, to, to diagrams, um, um, started because w what we found out is is that we, we can't really think about this ranking without taking into account what is being ranked right so we um, have on the one side in this in this paper something that is more you know more computational more uh, like data analysis we have you know some algorithmic evaluation of change but then we have also like a lot of like qualitative description like, like you know what's um, like what kind of contents are coming in so just to give you an example, what we, what we observed was that, <clears throat> especially during these newsy moments, a more uh, like native uh, uh, YouTube uh, content. So opposed to um, maybe, you know, like, um, like uh, television material being put onto YouTube uh, um, came in uh, uh, more, more often. And, and, and we found that there's indeed like a, like a platform vernacular that sits behind each one of those queries, right? That, for example, for Syria, we found like really strange videos. We called them we called them war porn, um, and it's just videos of um, of war machinery in action. Like not 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 with uh, you know people getting killed or anything. Just like like cannons firing, right? And and and, and this kind of content would 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 be there quite um, quite systematically, right? And very um, very weird stuff, right? Um, and this is really where this 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 idea uh, has started that we have to look at. Um, at uh, uh, you know, kind of a larger equation of the platform, not just the algorithm. I mean, what was quite interesting is that um, we were able to uh, detect some correlation between like like changiness, change in ranking. We used um, uh, a metric to uh, to measure that, and the amounts of videos published for a particular query, and the um, the search volume. So um, you're probably aware of Google Trends, it's a pretty interesting tool where you can see, you know, how, ch how search volume changes over time. But Google Trends actually also has this data for YouTube. So um, here the blue line you can see, you know, where it's, uh, the variation is maybe a little bit smaller, but it really tracks uh, uh, the other two uh, uh, metrics uh, quite, uh, quite nicely. So again, like the, 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 the people, you know, if you will play, a, play an important role in, uh, in the, the, the outcomes. Um, so, so in the end, you know, we're, we're, we have this kind of like very complex situation where we have a very large system um, that has on the one side complex technologies and like a lot of um, use practices that, um, that play a role. This is, this is why that paper is called from uh, ranking algorithms to ranking cultures, because in the end, um, it's, it's the, the combination of the technical and the social and 
maybe we even don't want to uh, uh, distinguish these two factors in the first place, but it's still a way of talking about this. Um, an interesting method that we encountered in, in, in the, that context um, is a Savage's notion of um, descriptive assemblage. So he says, you know, <clears throat> if you want to, if you want to study something uh, that's maybe quite complex, you, 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 you maybe, you know, you have to combine different modes of description and, and you know, articulate them. And we really try to do that, uh, to do that uh, uh, here. Um, so, so, so this is the first point. It's probably really the longest one, um, uh, but, but this is really kind of where, where it started, right? That we wanted to move um, a, a little bit further and um, um, some of the, the, the um, uh, things are that, that you know, we started to look at and want to look at increasingly in the future uh, are themselves still technical, right? But have like other elements, not just you know, the ranking and the recommendation. I really like Ian Bogost's uh, quote, who says, you know, concepts like algorithm have become sloppy shorthands, slang terms for the act of mistaking multi-part complex systems for simple singular ones, right? Um, so, so if we think about, um, yeah, Breton's term, right? Who says like, oh, uh, uh, you know, platforms within these like large markets engage in program coordination, like programming, is like a whole bunch of stuff, right? YouTube has, I mean, if you look at the interface that, that this video sits in right now, you know, you, you see all kinds of forms and functions. I mean, the, the, the upload possibility and the viewing possibility itself, of course, but then, you know, various limitations. I mean, there used to be a, a, a limit to video length. Um, uh, there are all kinds of interface items. You can like this video or dislike it. You can comment on it. I can disable the comment. So there's a whole, a whole like, um, uh, um, uh, um, you know, kind of like set of forms and functions that sit at the interface. And then of course, also like in the databases uh, that then, uh, uh, you know, collect, uh, collect uh, what's happening uh, uh, there. And, and there have been, you know, like interesting, interesting approaches here. Uh, uh, for example, Lights and colleagues have coined the, like the walkthrough method where you can, um, you have like a structured method to analyze these interfaces. Uh, and and uh, I think that really works uh, uh, quite uh, quite well. Philip Agui has the term grammar of action, right? So he says an interface, well, like the one that, that we now use to, uh, to, to share this, uh, this, uh, this moment, um, you know, has like basic actions and, and uh, action possibilities. And he calls that grammars. Um, uh, uh, Dina Bucher, for example, she, she, she talks about Facebook and how, you know, um, friendship is being configured through, you know, these kind of forms of functions. And she says, you know, the specific way in which sociality is, is programmed and coded, assembled and organized is really worth, uh, worth uh, uh, or, uh, like analyzing. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, like looking at then kind of like data flows uh, would be another way we could kind of like look into like how metric how metrics were uh, work and so forth. So so there's a whole a whole um, uh, um, a set of things that that we can uh, can 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 look at. Um, and and just to come back like schematically to this uh, this um, um, uh, well diagram or uh, um, a quick overview is is indeed these interfaces are not just like user interfaces, right? Or, or, well, maybe they're all user interfaces, but they're different user groups. So you are now watching that, that video, right? Through a particular interface. I uploaded this video through a particular interface. Um, and then if, for example, advertisers, they also have interfaces through which, you know, they're able to bid on certain categories, keywords and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. So some of that stuff, maybe, you know, pr previously uh, uh, was done, you know, through a phone call, like an advertiser would, would call a newspaper saying, oh, I would like to place an advertisement. But, but now this happens uh, through interfaces. There are millions of, not just millions of users and content creators, but there are also millions of advertisers potentially that can, uh, that can come in there, right? And interfaces play a role in, in, in steering how, how this all, all works. Um, I mean, this is just like, I mean, you know, an example of a, of a particular video here. It's kind of interesting because it's like a, a, a Dudonné is a very uh, controversial uh, French um, uh, uh, satirist or a, a comedian, right? And he has fully embraced YouTube and you can see he's like surrounded here by, uh, by merchandising um, 
uh, so, so just to indicate that this communicative situation, well, on the right you have the, the real-time chat and he interacts with uh, people through that. These possibilities, they, they're also increasingly relevant for uh, you know, economic, uh, economic questions. Um, and, and, and some of that you know, may go into a very different direction. I mean, for example, uh, here, uh, uh, um, uh, Facebook launching a petition feature. Um, so, so that means that they basically add like a new action possibility. And it's an, it's, it's an action possibility for a particular kind of practice, like you know, trying to form an audience, creating a, a petition, trying to influence politics and so forth. So those infrastructures, they change and sometimes really very, very quickly, which for analysis is, of course, uh, really difficult. Uh, this is just a screenshot from, uh, from YouTube Creator Studio, right? Which is like the other, like the, the other side of the YouTube interface. Um, it really makes sense to, to have a look at that. Uh, it's, it's actually one of the reasons why I started uploading uh, videos to YouTube. Because I, I just wanted to know like, how does it work, right? And, and um, I, I mean, it, particularly the analytics features are, are, are really quite, um, quite interesting. You can, for each video, for example, see where people stopped watching and, you know, if you talk too long, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe I should uh, take that to heart a bit more. Um, but, um, you know, Webster, he talks about this, these like, 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 like metrics dashboards about as, as market information regimes that give creators in this case, a, a, a real um, insight into like what happens to their products, what happens to their content. Um, and, and then, you know, maybe the opportunity to optimize, right? And, and all of those clickbait debates around, um, around uh, uh, YouTube and YouTube thumbnails um, are, are in a sense also um, made possible by, you know, these uh, creator interfaces that, for example, allow you to, to test different thumbnails and then see what, what, uh, what works, uh, works best. So again, you know, these interfaces, they, they give creators, of course, a lot of possibilities, but they're still shaped by, uh, by the company. Um, so there was a second, uh, second element, uh, first one, algorithms, infrastructures. And, and, and now, of course, we have, well, the, the, the fact that, that these interfaces are, are, and these systems are inhabited by, well, you know, a lot of different participants, like practices, contents, um, and, and all kinds of relations between them. Um, so, so the technical stuff, the algorithms and the infrastructures, they enter into uh, dynamics, which what is sometimes called appropriation, right? It's, it's um, this, idea, this idea of ma making something like one's own, right? So the, the creators, uh, um, uh, they, 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 you know, they, they have little influence on, on, on what they, you know, on the forms of function of, uh, and functions of, um, of YouTube, but, but they can take the existing ones and, and then, you know, try to repurpose them for, you know, what they want to do and, and you know, use them in ways that maybe the, the, um, the um, uh, uh, you know, the creators haven't even, uh, even foreseen maybe, you know. Um, uh, so, so, so now we're kind of entering into um, like social practices and, and that's of course, um, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on um, and, and people have really tried to, to study this uh, uh, qu quite, a, quite a bit. There have been some recent studies trying to paint like an overall picture of, of YouTube, right? So at a very high, uh, uh, like a, a macro level um, uh, or, you know, also medium, medium level data analysis um, uh, where, you know, they try to uh, look into maybe like larger network dy dynamics for example, kind of this idea of the Matthew effect is something that people very often find here. This idea that you know, if you have already some visibility, it's easier to uh, to to you know gain more subscribers, gain more views, so the big become bigger and so forth, right? So those are these kind of findings that one can make on, on that level. Um, but uh, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, there are all kinds of um, uh, uh, like uh, qualitative studies that go into you know, the way that users um, uh, make videos, interact, uh, build a channel, um, really goes into what Jenkins uh, uh, called, you know, participatory culture, um, uh, you know, the forming of vernaculars and so forth. And, and I mean, uh, again, things are becoming more complicated because, because also on the, on the, on the um, content creator side, right, we see this um, uh, professionalization, but also emerging um, new actors, so multi-channel networks, for example, are um, 
uh, uh, you know, companies that you know kind of try to bring creators on board and then help them, you know, with marketing, with production, and so forth. So there's another like layer being uh, being uh, uh, introduced uh, introduced here. Um, I mean, the the, the in, in in the in the the context of YouTube in the beginning, uh, uh, research was very much focused on just videos. Um, while now uh, things have moved increasingly towards uh, channels, right? Um, as um, well, maybe, maybe that's part also of this like professionalization, right? People are making money with YouTube, and the channel is really like this this unit uh, around which uh, that can be um, organized, right? Uh, stabilized, professionalized, creating branding, uh, creating um, uh, you know like an audience that uh, you know comes back and rewatches your. Uh, uh, your videos, you know, you know, uh, in many videos they say, you know, like and subscribe, hit that bell icon, right? Uh, it's really kind of the idea of of constructing, well, you know, a channel that uh, that then has some uh, um, uh, s stability, and they they also make YouTube quite uh, quite uh, navigable. I mean, a lot of people they they don't necessarily do uh, like all all of that much searching or or follow recommendations, but they have a lot of subscriptions, right? They're subscribed to a a lot of channels, and this is how they uh, how they experience uh, YouTube. The, the the big question is here, of course, like 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 who is even on YouTube? And 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 you know when people talk about YouTube as this um, facilitator of um, you know far right propaganda, th the question is how do we even know that, right? Um, uh, like what are the themes and the issues and the, c the contents that uh, that dominate YouTube? What kind of content works? Um, and and you know kind of. Of course, then it's interesting to think about, like, what is the role of maybe something like the recommendation system in, in driving that? So, so, so who is like who dominates this new screen ecology? To come back to that term, right? This is, this is really kind of where we enter a little bit this domain of, um, of um, you know, like like industry, media industry um, uh, research um, uh, that uh, maybe uh, really observes these kind of processes and tries to you know describe uh, you know who's on who's on top right uh, who are the most um, who are the most uh, subscribed to channels the most viewed channels what are they doing how are they producing sorry i just have to get a bit, little bit of tea and um uh, uh, you know this is uh, like one way of um of, of uh, going about this right um um this can be like overall or one can maybe um, like a lot of people have been looking into like specific kinds of um, uh, 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 channels. I mean, this is uh, uh, one of my favorite channels, uh, uh, ContraPoints, um, um, who's part of this um, like emerging um, um, like network of YouTubers called BreadTube who, uh, who tried to, uh, well, provide ContraPoints to this far right uh, um, uh, uh, arguments right and, and 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 these are these kind of like like sub niches right we have of course uh, you know these very very popular channels that a lot of uh, people know and have very high subscriber numbers but then you know we move into specific like sub areas and suddenly you also notice like whoa there's also like a lot of people here uh, uh, like watching and subscribing and um, yeah it's a it's a pretty big um, big um, uh, uh, platform one way that we can study this, you know, uh, and this is like one of the reasons why I put this here, we can look at channel connections. Unfortunately, um, uh, um, YouTube has removed what you can see here on the right, the related channels, but we can still look at how channels feature each other. And um, in some cases, we can also get quite, a, quite some um, uh, data on how channels subscribe to each other, right? Um, so we still have the possibility of looking into ah you know so what's uh, what's uh, um, uh, 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 you know what what kind of yeah channel networks uh, uh, appear here right so so we have um, ways of trying to map this kind of ecology um, a little bit so this is uh, something that you can do uh, with the YouTube data tools uh, you know you can start from a couple of channels and then see you know what kind of comes out there and. Um, um, uh, this is one way of yeah gaining some visibility on like what's on YouTube, who's on YouTube, how are they connected, and so forth. What's their context? And and together with a, a Spanish colleagues, I've uh, started to work uh, some some time ago on a really like large scale project. Uh, you know that tries to do this, but uh, but much much bigger. So we're trying to um, to crawl all of YouTube. Actually, we already did um, 
Um, so we were able to um, to um, go uh, to recuperate data for 36 million uh, uh, um, YouTube channels, which is, you know, not all, but yeah, it's quite a lot, um, quite a higher uh, percentage. Uh, and, and so we now try to answer this question, like what is on YouTube, um, you know, related to themes, structure, reception, monetization, we're particularly interested in that, um, uh, in, a, in a very like a large scale, um, fashion. It's a big project, so so there's going to be a series of um, of publications. But in the background, um, we're we're kind of particularly interested in well, we already see the term here monetization. So this kind of like um, like business dimension, um, havens at all, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, um, suggest the the the, the approach. Uh, of uh, what they call it critical media industries studies right and that's for us kind of really an, an inspiration to kind of like understand the 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 production processes and the monetization and so forth i already mentioned uh, a chatwick's hybrid media system but also josef van dyke has this notion of a culture of connectivity that emerges right and, and since we we go through those network uh, uh these channel connections this kind of this notion of connectivity plays some interesting role here so so here we follow um yeah what john tuka has called exploratory data analysis so so you know we start with that data set and uh, now that the project has already uh, advanced quite a bit we've already like learned a lot from just you know trying to look into the data see what's happening and, and this is like a more of an iterative process to research we don't have like this one research question rather a number of intuitions that iteratively you know get worked into um into um more concrete questions. I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, kind of go into uh, the details how the crawl works. Um, we're using a breadth-first crawl, and it's, yeah, it's been a lot of fun to, uh, <laughs> to, uh, to, to build this. Uh, so I kind of I enjoy making software. So this has been an interesting, interesting process. Uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of um, uh, data gathering. Uh, so the whole data on the whole is a bit more than a terabyte of uh, data, and. Um, uh, uh, yeah, but in the end, uh, um, you know, uh, that project's, um, you know, that, that's, I think, the basic, uh, like, overview of the, of the data that we were able to recuperate. Um, so we've uh, uh, cut them into tiers, channels that uh, have more than 100,000 subscribers. Um, we found 153,000 uh, of those. And, and, and this, is, this is pretty close to the, to the actual number, right? So as we go down... Yeah, we're you know getting less and less uh, confident in our sample, but the top part uh, this is really the the like like very um, very confident in that one. Um, uh, uh, Nine hundred and twenty three thousand um, uh, channels that have more than ten thousand subscribers, right? Still very confident in that one. Four point four million channels that have more than a thousand subscribers, and and this is actually where YouTube allows you to start monet monetizing. So, so basically above a thousand is like the monetizable YouTube, if you will, 4.4 million channels. Um, so already just these numbers, they give us some idea, you know, how big is it? Um, even, you know, if, um, if we know nothing else, this gives us some sense of scale. And then if you look, if you look at the table, at the second row, the video IDs, this basically gives you I an idea how many videos uh, uh, these channels are uh, uh, published. So um, uh, the the elite, what we call the elite, the channels above 100,000 have published almost 140 million um, videos in their lifetime, right? Uh, whereas the 4.4 the um, have only 780 million. I mean, that's more, of course, but if you think like per channel, you can really see that it's the, the elite, if you will, that actually really does dominate YouTube um, in terms not just of, uh, you know, subscribers, but also in terms of views and in terms of um, uh, content uh, made, right? And yeah, it's called mapping YouTube. So uh, we're indeed, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, um, uh, doing a little bit of mapping ourselves. And, and, and here you can see actually the, the, these elite channels and how they spread out um, in terms of um, uh, locale. Uh, locale in this case meaning you know like country um uh, you have a little bit of color coding here um i think some of the things that are interesting uh, and this of course you know needs some time to 
really make sense of, uh, but um, I've, I've stared at it already uh, uh, some time. So, uh, you know, some, some of the things that I find interesting here is that really at the center of YouTube, you find this like, like English language Anglosphere that actually doesn't really differentiate all that much between you know the US and, uh, and and UK and 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 then everything kind of like clusters around here. You see at the top, you see um, you see uh, uh, India. Um, very interesting on the on the left, uh, Brazil on the one side very big and actually less connected than the other big countries uh, uh, to this. Uh, uh, core right forming more of like a like a separate um, uh, a separate um, uh, uh, community right so this is another way of uh, you know how we can start make a sense of, of, of this this is yet another way um, this is a view of the different channel categories so you have to imagine that every channel on YouTube is is categorized uh, in in some way and, and this is not uh, chosen by the creators so um, uh, if you are a YouTube creator, you can, um, you can uh, um, you know, categorize your videos, uh, but then YouTube uses uh, an algorithm to classify your channel into a particular category. Um, and, and this is very important for monetization. So, so some categories are fully excluded from monetization and then uh, advertisers can really choose, you know, I want to be part of this and that, right? And here you can see the main, the main uh, categories and then subcategories. And um, the reason why <clears throat> this like fans out a bit on the side is that not every channel is then classified into a subcategory, right? So you may, your channel may just be lifestyle uh, and then nothing else, right? Channels can also be classified into several categories. So there's some overlap, but the size here is, is just the number of channels in there, right? And, and um, while, um, you know, uh, the, the politics component has really been highlighted in these critiques of YouTube. You can see here it actually on the on the on the, you know, mid bottom right. It's actually very, very small compared to, you know, entertainment, lifestyle, music in particular. That's that's going on here. Right. So 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 I mean, this is, of course, like very general. But but again, you know, it 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 it, it helps us kind of understand these like practices and contents uh, and so forth. Um, the fourth point, and, and now I, I, I think we're going to get shorter with uh, each one of them, um, is, um, um, well, I mean, these practices, and I've already like highlighted elements like, um, like monetization, um, are really, I think, on, on YouTube are very, very important. So it makes sense to look more deeply into industrial practices and, and then particularly into um, uh, business, uh, business models. Um, and, and YouTube indeed still, you know, um, reposes in, in large parts on advertisement, right? And, and interestingly, from the beginning. Um, so it was from the beginning, or let's say early on, a platform that would do revenue sharing with creators. And I think that really distinguishes it from other uh, social media platforms, even if, you know, now, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, Instagram in particular has also like uh, added uh, monetization features. But um, but that that of course uh, uh, um, you know has been around for like a long time on um, on uh, on uh, on YouTube, um, uh, and there are more than a million uh, um, uh, uh, like partners uh, that that uh, agree uh, that you know in, in 2016 had monetization possibilities. Through our research, we can now estimate that it's probably over four million at this uh, at this point, and it, it's still like the classic mechanism of free, right? So. The, the screenshot on the right, you know, should re, should remind you a little bit of this like multi-sided market um, uh, a configuration uh, where, you know, users don't have to pay, but it's then basically advertisers who bring in the money. Um, so in our analysis, we're looking now quite a bit at, you know, what actually happens when you move up the subscriber letter, right? I, I've used the term uh, professionalization quite a bit, and it's not just like the channel becoming better, right? Um, I am using a microphone today, just saying. Uh, so professionalization happening uh, uh, right here. Um, but, but you know, it, it really also has to do again with how the platform handles that. So for example, if you, I already mentioned, right? If you have a uh, thousand subscribers, you can start monetizing your, your videos. Um, if, you, if you go to a hundred thousand, you actually, uh, uh, you know, you actually have 
get the possibility to interact with what they call partner managers. So, so suddenly, you know, you're no longer just, um, just uh, uh, you know, using the interfaces, but you can maybe call somebody, you know, and have like direct interaction and look at the screenshot. They're having so much fun and it's awesome. So yeah, excellent. Um, but then of course, um, particularly since uh, um, the question of monetization has really become, well, quite complicated. And uh, um, you, you've certainly heard or, or maybe heard of the term apocalypse, right? Uh, this idea that, um, you know, uh, um, uh, advertisers have um, kind of like drawn back from, uh, from uh, YouTube after, you know, um, uh, finding their ads being placed on content that maybe they don't want to be placed on, right? And uh, as I said before, whole channel categories have been demonetized. And so um, uh, channels like, you know, ContraPoints who deal with like uh, uh, complicated subjects as, you know, sexuality and so forth, they have fully opted out of advertisement uh, um, uh, monetization, right? And they have moved to platforms like um, like Patreon, so fan funding or crowdfunding, um, where, uh, 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 you know, you can subscribe basically to their um, uh, Patreon and, and, and you know, uh, um, uh, give a certain amount of money every 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 month and then you know maybe you get access to some additional perks and you know maybe more videos or again some interaction or something something like this so these kind of monetization schemes um, um, uh, ha have also like diversified right um, patreon is certainly uh, important but but if you look at um, these um, uh, description sections from two channels well one again contra points um, and the other is um, uh, from Optimum Tech. It's uh, like a tech channel. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I like that stuff. I'm sorry, um, uh, but but they're also I think good uh, good uh, good uh, good examples because on, on the on the right right you see um, you see Patreon right you see the donate link and then the, like the obligatory um, the obligatory uh, um, uh, social media but also like merchandising right whereas on the left one um, it's a tech channel. Um, so there's no um, um, uh, there's no Patreon here, I think actually. No, there's no Patreon here. But then you see at the very bottom, as an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. And you can see that actually on the top, those are all links to um, Amazon. They're just they just use a URL shortener, but they're all links to Amazon, and they include like the token of the channel. And if somebody clicks on the link and buys the object, they get a they get a percentage of the sale. So, so again, kind of like another, it's called affiliate sa sales, right? Another way of monetizing. And what we're trying to do in our project is actually, um, so we found within the 138 million videos posted by the top, you know, the elite, the, the channels that have more than 100,000 subscribers, we found uh, almost 600 million links. Now we're, we're trying to, you know, kind of like analyze those links and see, you know, which kind of areas of YouTube use which kind of monetization uh, uh, methodology. Um, and, and indeed, I mean, uh, this, this changes also on YouTube side quite a bit. Um, uh, here, for example, you can see um, two relatively new features that YouTube integrated into the interface. On the one side, the, the, the built-in merch store, right? Uh, um, here's the Young Turks uh, channel and you can buy, you know, uh, T-shirts and, and, and that integration. And then also the, um, the uh, join function, which is very similar to Patreon, right? So if I join a channel, then, you know, I can pay a monthly, um, a monthly donation or a monthly um, token of appreciation to a, to a channel. So actually very similar to, a, to, to Patreon in that sense. And, and then, of course, YouTube also has paired, paid, paid tiers. Uh, YouTube Music, it used to be called YouTube Premium, uh, uh, YouTube Red. So they all they, they went through all kinds of uh, attempts here, and 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 that money, of course, then also um, um, you know is distributed in part, of course, to um, to uh, uh, creators, right? So so what we would like to do with our big project is to to see you know maybe within a network like this, so you know, like who uses like which kind of monetization features, right? And, and like, where does the money come from? Uh, um, so when we, when we talk about like industrial practices, uh, I mean, there's of course, uh, uh, um, like something that has really to do with the videos themselves, but, but I think uh, uh, money is really like an important 
uh, element. And, 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 you know, we can continue adding some of those things here, right? Um, uh, um, instead of just having the advertisers, now we can, for example, add the multi-channel networks here as, you know, connecting between advertisers and content creators. We can add direct monetization through Patreon, right? And, and kind of this platform diagram becomes more and more uh, um, complicated. So fifth point, um, much more qu quickly, I mean, some of that already like builds on what I've said, but, um, but um, um, th th like the platforms, they have, of course, like policies and they have of something like, like values or, um, and, and I don't mean that in a, in like a um, um, necessarily positive sense, but, but they have like, like, like rationales and principles and ideas that they, uh, that they, they, that, that they work on, right. That, that, uh, um, you know, get implemented. Um, and, and we can see that, that, you know, in the beginning in particular, uh, platforms very often justified the way that, for example, algorithms wor work um, through an eco and a very, you know, well-known economic theory called revealed preference that basically um, like flattens like behavior and desire into one, right? So it's, uh, it's this idea that, um, that uh, you know, a consumer um, reveals his or her preference by shopping, right? So uh, if you, if you put, put that onto, onto YouTube, you can basically say, well, people, people uh, uh, watch what they like, right? And they like what they watch and, and there is no difference. And so we can basically, uh, um, you know, create machine learning algorithms that, um, that uh, you know, kind of learn what people have previously watched and then just give them more of that, right? Um, but, but of course we have also um, heard, particularly Google used to talk about its search engine in the beginning uh, 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 through this logic of votes, you know, like, like a link um, from one page to another is like a vote. Um, so, so, you know, that, that's, it's more like a, uh, um, like a, you know, relying on the language of dem democracy or dem democratic uh, principles. So, so there are all kinds of things that, that, um, that, that uh, come into place, but, um, uh, um, you know, particularly YouTube has really been in, in, in crisis over the last, over the last year, uh, or no, sorry, not last year, but the last, uh, last three years, I think, you know, starting with the apocalypse, um, that, that, you know, there, there have been like nervous advertisers, right. Um, who don't want to have their, their products on like Nazi content. Right. Uh, and then, and then there has been like a lot of political pressure, um, you know, public criticism, uh, the menace of regulation. And, and, and so the, this kind of like value and policy situation has been much more, has become much more, um, much more complicated. Uh, it, 10 years ago, all of the platforms really described themselves as, you know, we're hands off, we're like neutral intermediaries. We don't, um, we don't censor, we don't uh, block, we don't, right? But that has really changed, uh, well, you know, due to commercial and, and political pressure. Um, and, and now we can really see the emergence of, um, um, you know, like censorship techniques. And I, I, mean, I mean, this like in a, in a value neutral sense, right? Um, um, uh, that, you know, some content is being taken offline or, deep, or, or you know, reduced in visibility um, uh, um, uh, based on all kinds of criteria. In, on YouTube, this has been around, you know, for a long time in the context of uh, copyright, um, then also terrorism, but now, you know, um, uh, elements like, um, you know, uh, toxic speech, uh, um, harassment and so forth get increasingly, uh, misinformation, of course, get increasingly targeted as, you know, elements that should be, um, that should be, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 maybe blocked uh, uh, and, and, you know, controlled by either users, algorithms, uh, uh, and so forth. Um, interestingly on, on YouTube, and I've, I've talked about this now already a couple of times is, is demonetization is really, is really, a, a, like, like one of the, the things that, 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 that YouTube can do, right? It's not, it's not just like, like, like blocking or leaving, right? But there are more nuanced forms that, that uh, appear on these uh, platforms. This is a fun, uh, a fun, um, a fun uh, a photo, I think, um, um, which has nothing to do with uh, YouTube, but, um, it was, uh, it's a photo from uh, uh, September 2018 when Jack Dorsey, the, 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 the guy here on the left with the, the, the beard, um, uh, uh, came out of the, um, the American uh, Senate 
where he was uh, he, he had a, a, a hearing right the, the, in front of the uh, of the Senate where they grilled him um, uh, over you know the role of Twitter misinformation and so forth and then he, on the right here kind of trying to accost him is uh, is Alex Jones a, a well-known uh, conspiracy theorist um, who uh, who was uh, tr who tried to uh, you know who talk uh, to try to accuse George uh, Dorsey of uh, like sh shadow banning conservative voices right shadow banning is, is another like a like a bit of a nuanced way of of uh, uh, reducing visibility it's basically um uh, uh, you know you you're, you're actually banned from the platform but you don't notice it right um uh, so you can still post but maybe nobody reads your uh, your your stuff and it's a re it's really interesting photo because uh, you see the guy right to um right to 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 Jack Dorsey has a Google Glass, uh, right, which is fun. And then to the very right, notice this beautiful uh, Casio uh, database watch. Uh, it's really uh, fun. Um, and interestingly, three days after this incident, um, Alex Jones was actually banned from from Twitter, right? So um, yeah. Um, and and I mean, like the, the question, of course, is how can one study these policies, right? Um, uh, uh, content moderation and so forth. It's very difficult. It's very difficult because. Well, it's hard to study what you can't see. Um, but for example, Twitter has shared some data sets for, you know, particular what they call operations, right? For uh, particular cases of, um, you know, large scale deplatforming, large scale uh, tweet deletion, uh, deletion. And, and, you know, you can download this and, and thereby understand a bit how, they, how those uh, mechanisms uh, function, right? So, so all of these points are amendable to particular forms of research. And, and, and then I think another thing is interesting in this kind of like policy and value context is, you know, there's a real like debate and that goes both through um, like news media, right? And, um, and uh, um, like Mark Zuckerberg famously said that he's fundamentally uncomfortable making some of those decisions. And, and I think that's actually a, a pretty smart, um, a pretty smart uh, uh, position in the sense that, you know, um, um, for a company like Facebook, uh, regulation may actually be quite positive because um, um, uh, that would basically say, well, you know, um, uh, we're, we're, you know, we're just following what what you know the, the government tells us, uh, and and regulation could also actually be um, make it more difficult for competitors to uh, to enter the 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 market. So um, I mean, you know, Zuckerberg he has talked about those things quite a bit, and this is like an interesting Facebook post that he made, right, where he says, you know. Um, like, like, like values are not just something that is, you know, like something that you have in your heart, right? But, but they go into design, right? They go into decisions. How should the platform look like? And, and, and he, he said, you know, I'm changed today. I'm changing the goal. I give our product teams from focusing on helping you find relevant content to helping you, uh, have more meaningful social interactions. Right, so so this is basically like a like a, like a value shift that he's uh, he's announcing there, right? Independently of the question whether you know it's true or cynical, I, I, I you know I don't want to talk about that. But um, um, here we can really see also this shift from this kind of like neutrality, right, to something like humanist values, meaningful social interaction. Interestingly, in like the next paragraph, he says, you know, but it's also be, you know don't worry shareholders, it's also be good for the for the company, it's also going to be good for the, the, the company. But, but you know, th th those are, I think, really uh, complex, uh, complex question, right? Uh, who, who, should, uh, uh, who should take on these, um, these uh, uh, you know, kind of um, a much more sensitive tasks when it comes to questions of, uh, of speech and so forth? But, but, I mean, this goes into many different directions. I mean, I, I started this presentation t talking about the relationship between, like, platforms and journalism. Right. And, and, and there's, you know, a big question here, how to, for example, how to revenue share. And, and this is um, Google's news initiative where, they, you know, they, they you know, uh, um, uh, distribute some of the advertising money to um, to um, um, a, a journalists and journalistic institutions. Right. And, and, and that also has to do with like policies and, 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 and values, you know, and, and yeah, I mean, one can really ask whether that's you know kind of enough, but um, but uh, uh, just wanted to, to say that that this is happening. Um, so the last point, very very quickly, it's something. It's a topic that I find um, really quite uh, quite interesting to think even like even higher. You know, when I think about something like YouTube, 
like like what are what are its competitors you know which kind of other companies are part of that space which you know what is youtube part of and, and you know of course that youtube is owned by a by a by, by google right so a, like a, like a very powerful uh, company and and i've been working a little bit on this notion of um a concentric diversification as an idea to like think about how does a company like google you know expand from um what you could call its core right it's uh, it's established business where it, you know there's 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 money coming in it, it, it really you know it, it's a it's a market leader you know how it works to you know maybe an extension layer where, where you still master quite a lot of stuff uh, but maybe there's not enough rent revenue coming in yet right and then maybe an expansion layer thinking about that where you where you experiment right um so so, so this is kind of a way of 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 going maybe into more classic um um uh, political economy of uh, of uh, of of the, the the media i mean the, the idea is also a little bit to think about like how how do you know how, how do those kind of um uh, a large internet monopolies like emerge and stabilize right and, and 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 you know part of part of that is of course like just buying companies so this is like a very very rudimentary um like overview of some of the 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 things that um uh, the products that google uh, google made and part of them are made in-house but a lot of that is like buying buying companies right um so so here there's really kind of a a question here how to study this and this maybe moving already a little bit away from uh, media studies but i, I just wanted to really quickly uh, uh, mention this because i think there's also like a technological factor in there that's really interesting right these these, these um for example machine learning translates quite well from one do domain to another right and that could really mean that there's a real advantage for a company like google when it moves into a different uh, into a different uh, area um, and then of course you know think about like data centers um, uh, i mean youtube for example requires enormous amounts of uh, you know bandwidth and processing capacity and and this is already something that that google masters uh, uh, really really well and then maybe you know the data captured in in one product can be used to improve another one and so so there all, all all kinds of interesting constellations that um that uh, emerge uh, emerge here um so yeah that, that's it I, I i you know i have a couple of conclusions i i, I hope uh, that uh, you you well maybe you stayed there with me until uh, until now i mean i i know that was kind of like a lot of different things but but it's it's also I think it, it's reflective of um, this this kind of like um, like like quite complicated situation that, that that we're in right so if we if we're thinking about you know social media in times of crisis um, uh, you know like behind that is 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 a media system in in transition right and and that transition has been uh, um, you know of course the, the like an, uh, there has been emerging uh, you know uh, new actors emerging. Uh, but also there's a real like uh, real reconfiguration and, and and that really has been following like a particular digital mode right and and that's not just algorithm i hope that's clear now but like a whole a whole number of things right that 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 come in and 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 i think this starting point of like normalization and standardization through you know interfaces and 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 you know like data forms um leading to the emergence of large-scale markets I think it's, it's very interesting and also i think this flattening uh, that that you know we we all use the same interfaces and then what what differentiates a youtube channel from another is actually scale um is uh, is is quite interesting so everything becomes like content yeah everything is everything is content and 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 because it's like packaged that way it can circulate uh, quite quite easily so i think that's the background for for a lot of uh, a, a lot of this so we have a lot of like items circulating and, and, and my, my question in, in, in all of this is a little bit just like, okay, so what's going on here, right? So, so if we say, okay, there are 4.4 million channels with more than a thousand subscribers on YouTube, um, what are they doing? What, what, what does this mean? You know, which, which in which interfaces are they operating? You know, how do recommender systems come in and, and you know, configure these, uh, these flows? But, but those are really difficult um, questions to ask and and um i think you know if if we want to summarize these um these uh, uh, six points that i that i went through right with a uh, algorithm i think it's very interesting that 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 they really kind of like automate some of this programmed uh, coordination right that they are are you know kind of um 
uh, you know, continuously adapting and performing what I've called like interested readings and interested inf optimization, where you know, something like a recommender system can can you know personalize, localize, and and always better learn what what kind of triggers uh, users into uh, watching or clicking uh, and so on and so forth, right? So um, the algorithms, of course, play a really uh, these kind of algorithms play an important uh, role role here. Um, then I think these these modulable and and uh, um, also you know quickly changing interfaces they, they, they capture the participants their practices and also like data right um, so they're also playing part in this coordination role and in this translation role right between the different participants that are you know kind of like interacting without directly touching right the, the advertisers go through their own interface and, and then you know, something is, is, is being placed uh, uh, maybe on, uh, on your, your video. Um, and, and, and this is, I, I call this techno-institutional because it, it really, you know, it, 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 has, it has this institutional component a little bit like, you know, it, 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 they're almost like concrete policies, these interfaces, right? Um, uh, uh, but, but indeed, a lot of it has a technological dimension. Um, then there's just a lot happening there, like large numbers of participants, large numbers of contents. They do all kinds of different things, right? They produce value for the platform. So they appropriate, you know, the forms and functions. Um, so there's on the one side, you know, there's control through the platform, but there's also like this bustling appropriation and to understand the platform on the whole, we can't just look at like one side, but have to try and see like how, how do they, they, they come together, right? Um, and uh, um, yeah, I mean, looking more at the economic dimension, you can see like the bus like business models and, and like these you know, corporate strategies that create value, but then indeed also like the variety of industrial practices, different forms of monetization that emerge, not all of them going, you know, through YouTube's channels. I mean, Patreon is, 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 is still, I think, an uh, independent uh, uh, company, right? And, and not owned by, uh, by YouTube. So, so part of those revenue streams then go elsewhere, or maybe like merchandising, or you know, it's other other ways. Um, then we have you know kind of like policies, values, and and of course like justification discourses that seek to kind of like like protect this existing uh, is, is existing model, and and uh, uh, I think that process has really become quite interesting in over the last years. And then my last point was like diversification and competition um, of you know individual companies and between companies. Um, really asks this question like, okay, um, like, like how can we understand this, this, uh, this emergence of these large monopolies that seem to, you know, um, uh, uh, dominate not just one area, but another one. And, uh, and you can, for example, see that, that YouTube has done all kinds of, so e even if we don't look at Google, right, but just YouTube, all kinds of things like trying to, you know, they had mo a moment where they actually were, you know, producing quite a number of shows, maybe following a bit the Netflix model, um, they've tried to get more into uh, into uh, yeah, s stuff like uh, video game streaming, right? Competing with Twitch, who's owned by Amazon. Um, uh, they have been um, also uh, uh, giving the opportunity for like traditional television station sta stations, like news channels, to stream through their platform, right? So, 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 so you can also see that they, they kind of um, uh, uh, try to see, you know, what what else can we do with um, with uh, uh, um, uh, uh, YouTube and and uh, uh, just a, a, as a very quick footnote, but um, uh, uh, you've heard about Google Stadia, which is like a like a cloud gaming service, and the idea is that um, at one point maybe with with YouTube you could watch somebody playing a game, and then click on a button on YouTube and jump into the game, right at at that at that uh, uh, same maybe level or something, right. Um, so, 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 you know, we, we can see uh, quite a lot uh, um, ha happening here, right? And, 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 and this, I think, is, is, is um, one of the reasons why well, this is really has become a deeply expansionist like model, right? It's really a, a model that tries to, you know, adopt the platform model, right? To, to, to suck in uh, uh, more and more, right? And, and playing this dialectics between decentralization and uh, centralization. Um, and, uh, I, uh, you know, I, I think like part of that, I mean, it's maybe a, a bit of a broad term, but I like to think about platforms as these like transversal, transversal network effect machines, right? That 
they, they, it's, it's not just like a classic network effect that, for example, if you have a, if you have a phone, right, it's great if a lot of other people also have phones. If you just, if it's just you who has a phone, it doesn't, you know. Um, but here it's not just kind of like, you know, there's one level, but the connection between different kinds of uh, uh, networks. And I think it's also interesting from like a, a media industry's perspective that, that YouTube doesn't follow the kind of like what, what, um, what Cunningham called uh, the South California model, uh, the Hollywood model, right? Uh, um, uh, um, uh, but rather they follow the North California model, which is more the, the um, uh, like internet company model. So it's not a classic like media industries model, but um, something that goes through a lot of iteration, experimentation, risk taking, right? Um, so media companies, um, that operate as internet companies. Um, it's interesting. And, and I think, you know, that, that um, uh, in, in current analysis, I think we really, uh, like, underestimate the complexity of all of this. I, in, in our kind of, like, big crawl project, we've already, like, discovered a lot of things that, that we really weren't uh, um, uh, uh, aware of. And, um, and this is not just, like, capitalism as usual, you know, in the sense that, ah, you know, it's a product being sold. There's really something happening here that I think... Uh, requires uh, uh, specific uh, responses um, in terms of analysis, but then also in terms of uh, policies, right? For example, this debate around around content moderation. Um, this, there are no easy answers there, right? This is, uh, I think, a really a new situation, and um, it's um, it's really not so easy to uh, to deal with it. Um, yeah, so I, I think I took uh, much longer than I intended. But, um, well, this is YouTube, so uh, maybe you also had a pause and um, got a, I don't know, refreshment. Um, in any case, uh, thanks, uh, thanks uh, for, uh, for listening, and uh, I hope that was a little bit uh, interesting, and I wish uh, all of you uh, uh, good luck. I hope, uh, I hope that you're, um, you're doing, uh, doing uh, uh, well, uh, given the current circumstances, and uh, yeah, good, good luck.